Cape Coast High Court has cancelled the 2020 parliamentary elections in the same north constituency of the central region. The petitioner Michael Ankoma Nimfa contends that the winner of the December 7th parliamentary elections in the same north constituency, James Jachikwesen, held dual citizenship as a Ghanaian and Canadian and therefore must be restrained from performing the duties of an MP. But after months of arguments in the courtroom, the Cape Coast Court delivered its judgment today, asking the annulment of the vote. We'll go live to Cape Coast shortly for reactions, but how did we get here? And that is where it started. The NDC has won the seat three times, 1996, 2012, and 2020. The NPP has won it four times in 2000, 2004, 2008, and 2016. And in December 7, parliamentary election, James Jachikwesen polled 17,498 17, votes as against 14,793 by the New Patriotic Party's Abena Drua Mensa. Uh, this it did not go down well for the NPP. On December 30, 2020, a resident of Asin North, Mr. Michael Ankuma Nimfa, filed a parliamentary election petition at the Cape Coast High Court challenging the eligibility of Mr. Kwe Singh to be a member of parliament. The matter has been in court for some time and there's been back and forth on this one. So he contended that the MP was not eligible on the basis that at the time he Kwesin filed his nomination to contest as a parliamentary candidate, he was still a citizen of Canada. And uh, such an act, he argued, was against the express provision of Article 94.2a of the 1992 Constitution and Section 9.2 of the representation of the People's Act 1992 PNDC Law 284. And among other reliefs, the applicants want the Cape Coast High Court to declare the nomination filed by uh, Mr. Quaison illegal, void, and of no legal effect. And uh, the uh, petitioner also see seeked the declaration that the decision by the EC to clear Mr. Kwesin to contest as parliamentary candidate was illegal, void, and of no legal effect. Today, another relief the applicant seeks is an order restraining Mr. Kwesin from holding himself out as the MP elects for Sin North, and another order cancelling the parliamentary election that took place in Asin North on December 7, 2020. The ruling today, on, and of course, on January 6 this year, Justice Boachie issued an interlocutory injunction against Mr. Kwesin, restraining him from holding himself as an MP elect until the final determination of the election petition. The election petition is over. This effectively barred the MP from being sworn in. Mr. Kwesin showed up in Parliament the same day to vote in the election to select the Speaker of Parliament and for him to be sworn into office as MP and we all know what happened. The clerk of parliament initially refused to allow him to take part in the election but the NDC parliamentary leadership argued Mr. Kwesin had not been served with a court order and was therefore not aware of any injunction restraining him from holding himself out as MP elect. What happened that night? After many arguments the clerk of parliament allowed Mr. Kwesin to vote and also to be sworn into office with a caution that Mr. Kwesing would bear the consequences of that action. Probably those are the consequences uh, we are seeing today. The court today has um, ruled in favor of the uh, complainant who wanted the um, election declared null and void. In fact, that's what the Cape Coast uh, court says in that judgment. Let's go live now to Cape Coast for more on this. Richard Kwejonyaku is our correspondent in the central region. He's been on this beat for us throughout the hearing. He joins me uh, via Zoom. Richard, what are the details of the judgment delivered by the court today? Well, so the judge set down four issues for trial. The first one was based on the capacity of the petitioner, Michael Ankuma Nifa. On that case, the court argued that Mr. Um, Ankuma Nimfa had the requisite capacity to maintain that particular action because he hails from that particular constituency. Uh, he's a Mason then, so he is uh, fortified under the constitution to uh, maintain such an action. On uh, the competence of that particular um, petition, the court indicated that 
Uh, yes, the petition was competent because when the election electoral commission conducts an election and then when the elections, uh, the results are declared, then anybody who is clothed with any capacity could go to court and then uh, would maintain an action in that particular thing. So that was the first issue. The second issue has to do with whether or not must, um, at the time of filing to contest the election, whether Article 94.2a kicks in and the court answered that, yes, um, once you are going into a contest, uh, you need to get every document ready. And so Article 94.2a actually kicks in when you go and file your process. You remember that the Electoral Commission open nomination for parliamentary uh, elections uh, from the 5th to 9th October. And Mr. Um, the Assent Not MP went to file. But at the time of filing, uh, he had not received his renunciation certificate from the Canadian authorities. In fact, uh, he placed it on record in the court that um, on the 19th of December, 2019, he initiated a process to get uh, his renunciation from the authorities, but uh, he only received the renunciation certificates on the 26th of November, a few days to the 2020 election. And so uh, the court indicated that um, it was a breach of the constitution, uh, the uh, article 94 a and then other statutory provision as well. On whether the electoral commission did anything wrong in the conduct of the election, because we remember that when uh, Mr. Um, uh, um, George Achikwesin filed to contest the election, there was a youth group that petitioned the electoral commission over the qualification of Mr. George Achikwesin because they believed that he held two citizenship, that of Canada and that of Ghana. But after some um, um, a study of the document and the petition, they invited Mr. George Achikwesin to come and respond to the petition. But uh, the Electoral Commission said that they had to allow him to go, go on to contest. On that, the judge indicated that there is nothing wrong with it um, as to when um, an action is, or there is a cause of action or anything. And so anybody after the election, after the elections have been conducted and the results have been so declared, anybody can go to court like Mr. Mike and Akuma Ninfa has done. He's been to court and then he's got um, judgment in his favor. The, fe the last one was whether or not uh, the elections held in the Asin North constituency is null and void. And then the court said that that particular election is null and void. And based on that, the court gave three orders. The first one, um, that um, the elections that were conducted in the Asin North constituency should be canceled. The second one is that the Electoral Commission should conduct fresh elections. And the third one is that Mr. George Achikwesin should not hold himself as the member of parliament for um, the Asin North constituency. And so now um, that election has been canceled and then and now a cost has been awarded against the Aston North MP. And so a cost of 40,000, 30,000 to the petitioner and uh, 10,000 to the second respondent being the electoral commission. And so that was what panned out in court. But we, we did not witness that kind of crowd that greeted when uh, greeted the court when uh, the interlocutory injunction was held on the 6th of January. But today it was only the police. They were thick in business. Um, they were there in their usual numbers. And then the national executive of the MP, NDC, as well as the region and the constituency executive. So that was really uh, what we saw in court today, Aisha. Um, Gordonako, what has been the reaction um, after this judgment? Let's start from the complainants' lawyers to the defendants' lawyers and then the mood in town. Okay, so um, let's start with the first respondent being George Achikwesin, the Asin not member of parliament. In fact, um, lawyer Alex Segbefia. Uh, spoke on behalf of the, the uh, of, of the Asin Not MP, and he indicated that it was a travesty of justice because there were certain things that the court should have considered or should have adverted their minds to that the court did not do so. He raised the issue of what constitutes allegiance and what constitutes a citizenship, and so that was what they were saying. But they said they do, they are they are not afraid of by election because the NDC is better placed. Uh, if a by-election is even conducted in that constituency, they win the seat any day. But win or lose, they want the right thing to be done. 
Let's listen to Alex Segbefia and we'll continue with Kojo Nyako. Uh, we have been in court. The day has been one of full of surprises. Yesterday we were in the Supreme Court uh, trying to get the Supreme Court to listen to certain aspects of this case. We were given various instructions by the Supreme Court, which meant that we had to file processes today at this High Court. We were here from 8 o'clock in the morning right through to 9 o'clock. None of the registry offices that were responsible for filing of these papers was open. The cash office itself was also closed. So we were not able to file processes till after 9 o'clock. But the judge had already gone into court and started giving his judgment. The people of Asin North has chosen this gentleman. There is no doubt in anybody's mind that at a time when there are three dates which are very important in this case. The first date is what we say, the filing. The second date is when we actually went to the polls to vote. And the third date is when he actually goes into parliament to be sworn. If you are nominated as a minister of state, till you go to the presidency, go through vetting, and the president then gives you and said, okay, now get, come and be sworn in. Are you a minister? No. The time you become a minister is the point at which you go and are sworn in with the, the president. If they nominate a judge to be in any position, when does he become a judge? At the point of nomination? It is when he is sworn in. So there are three separate dates. And this is a matter we think the Supreme Court has to actually rule on. There's the time of filing, there's the time of election in this particular case, when the election took place, was he a citizen or not, and then there's the time of when he actually swore that I am actually a member of parliament, in parliament. Two of those dates, he was clearly, there was no ambiguity about it. The ambiguity is based on a particular case in a different section of the law. It says you must be a citizen of Ghana. If you are not a citizen of Ghana, you cannot hold certain positions. You cannot hold this position, uh, president, you cannot be uh, a chief of defense staff, etc., etc. And then 94 2, it says you cannot be an MP if you do not, if you owe allegiance. There's a big difference between allegiance and citizenship. And sometimes they are mutually exclusive. This was never addressed in this case. This is part of the reason we wanted to go to the Supreme Court. And we went and were given certain instructions. And part of the applications we were going to do today was for this matter to be halted, for the Supreme Court to make an adjudication similar to what they did in Zaneto 94-1 to be done with 94-2 so that we know exactly what the outcome would be with regard to uh, this type of a scenario. To circumvent that and not let the Supreme Court have a say on this matter, we think it's unfortunate. So it's not a question of delay or the election petition. It's a question of what is right. The bottom line is, what did the people of Asin not want? They wanted our candidate to be their representative. So if there is a problem, make sure you take time to actually ensure that truly, truly, there had been some problem and therefore he could not. That is not the case. And that is why we are minded at this stage to look at the judgment closely. So uh, that was Alex Segbefi, a member of the NDC legal team following this um, case. Uh, Richard Kwejonyako, how has the NPP uh, been reacting to this judgment? Well, they, they feel that they've been vindicated because they saw this come in. They felt that uh, Mr. George Achipesi did not go through the right processes in uh, filing um, for uh, filing to contest the 2020 election. And then they have held that view for a while. And so they are happy that the court has vindicated their position. Um, let's listen to lawyers of uh, the NPP in court. Today, the court has said again that the electoral commission must also as a matter of this very law and the laws of ghana the election of honorable casing as declared null and void should proceed to conduct 
fresh elections. Again, the court also declared that the first, respond the first respondent at the time of the parliamentary elections in the Asin North constituency was not qualified to contest as a candidate. Indeed, we are happy because the judgment delivered over an hour, judgment delivered was very elaborate. It was hinged, pivoted on authorities, on the laws of Ghana, and at some material moment in the delivery of the judgment, his lordship even made references to relevant laws, international laws, such as even the Canadian Citizenship Act. We are of the view that this is victory for rule of law, and again, we'll be waiting for the Electoral Commission's announcement on when the said by-elections will be conducted. Let me also state that we in the MPP, we believe in the rule of law. We have heard from our friends in the NDC that we are using some technicalities to make sure that the sovereign will of the people of Asin North will be thwarted. This is false and malicious attempt by the ND NDC to render our rule of law ineffective, but it is not going to work. Kojonyaku, we are hearing of uh, the filing of complaints with the CID by the NPP. What more can you tell us about this? So, Aisha, that is true, and I have received a copy of uh, the complaint that has been filed. Uh, it, it is titled, Petition to Conduct Criminal Investigation investigations into false declaration made by James uh, Quest in MP for Asin North constituency. I write in my capacity as a citizen of Ghana to petition your office to conduct a formal criminal investigation into the conduct of Mr. James Quest in the member of parliament for the Asin North constituency in the central region. It would be recalled that the following that following the end just ended elections conducted by the Electoral Commission of Ghana, Mr. Quaison filed the nomination forms to contest for the position of a member of parliament for the Asin North constituency when the Electoral Commission opened nomination between 5th to 9th October. Sir, as part of the nomination forms, Mr. James Jachi Quaison signed a statutory declaration under part four of the forms. Mr. Quaison appended his signature before a judicial officer that he did not owe allegiance to any country other than Ghana at the time when he was fully aware that, as a matter of fact, he owed allegiance to Canada at that material time of making the said decla uh, statutory declaration. So it is also interesting to point out that in his quest to acquire a Ghanaian passport on 30 July 2019, Mr. James Jachi Kwesin was asked whether he held a dual citizenship, but he answered in the negative, when in fact that at the time of filing the said Ghanaian passport application forms, he was holding on to the Canadian citizenship. So this was filed by the MPP Regional Secretary, which uh, teaches me. And so uh, this is a new development that has cropped up after the judgment of the High Court. Uh, Richard Kwajanyaku, what is the mood in town? How are the constituents taking this news? Well, um, it is interesting to know that the constituents are unusually quiet. Um, you would expect that there would be this judgment would be greeted with with this reaction or that reaction, whether they are sad or whether they are happy. But in this particular case, they are going about their normal duties. The reaction has been very, very I mean, there is absolutely no reaction from them because you cannot gauge whether they are excited or whether they are sad about the decision that has been taken. I guess that they wait for whatever would happen. If it is a by-election, then they go with it. If it is also an appeal that will be triggered by the legal processes, then they will also go by it. And so um, that is really the mood here. But at the court premises, I mean, um, you could get two sides, the MPP obviously excited, and then the NDC, um, I mean, expressing shock at the judgment that was delivered by the High Court.
Richard Kwejanya Queens are man in the central region. We're still monitoring reactions coming from all quarters and we'll update you on what next for uh, Jachi Queens' party. Right now, uh, lawyer Bobby Banson joins me on phone for a conversation. Uh, Mr. Banson, you've been following this um, case in court. What's your initial reaction to this judgment? Good. Um Afternoon to you, to your viewers and your listeners, and thanks for having me. I think that it's, it's, it's a further development in our legal jurisprudence on election petition disputes and how judges should go about it and the consequence uh, 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 results that may arise from such disputes. I think uh, this is not the first time that a candidate has been stripped off um, his uh, uh, appointment or rather election because of issues of dual citizenship. I think that it would let every person seeking political office in Ghana be aware that there are people who will be watching you, whether for good reasons or for bad reasons, as long as you do not meet all the legal criteria, it may pop up one day. And so that people must always watch their back and make sure that they meet the criteria before they, they, they put themselves up for such political appointments, or for, sorry, for, for such public election uh, uh, processes. Already there are um, concerns uh, that the judge aired in the ruling. Uh, Kwekwaza has been reacting to this one. I mean, what's your view on this judgment? Well, I, I would not want to speak to whether the judge aired or not, because I have not seen the entire evidence, apart from what has been floating up on media. Um, I have not seen the certified copies of all the evidence that was before the judge. I believe that the right of appeal for the um, 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 Honourable Member of Parliament or former asset where is there, he can appeal to the Court of Appeal if he thinks that there was any error in law or in fact. So I would not want to speak to whether the judge erred or he did not err. I believe that whatever decision he gave must have been reasoned based on his version and analysis of the evidence that was put before him. If an affected party believes that the judge had erred, they have a right to appeal to the Court of Appeal which is the final appellate court in respect of such matters. Now, if you were a lawyer for Jachi Kwesin, what would you recommend? I mean, looking at how the case has um, um, traveled. Well, definitely he would have to exercise his right of appeal if he feels strongly that something had happened within that period. But, you know, it is a political position. And so you don't only consider the legal consequences of your actions. You also consider the political consequences of your action. Would you continue to deny the people you want to serve an opportunity to have a member of parliament whilst you pursue your agenda to have yourself reinstated as a member of parliament? So even though there may be the legal avenues available to me, I believe that the political party on whose ticket you stood for the elections will also have some political uh, uh, opinion on the, on the subject. Because it is him as a person that has been disqualified, not the NDC. And it is not as if the judgment had said MPP had won the elections. So even though there are legal options, which is the right of appeal, you would ask yourself the political implications of that step. And I believe that he's surrounded by people who are better versed in those matters to give him the best advice under the circumstances. I'm grateful, lawyer Bobby Bansing, for your time this afternoon. Thankfully, we are joined by uh, Mr. Alex Segbethia. He's a senior member of the opposition NDC whose candidate will now have to relinquish his seat and make way for, a, for the by-election. He himself was in court today. Uh, Mr. Segbethia, I'm grateful for your time. What next for the NDC in this case? Well, we thank you very much. Good afternoon to your viewers and your listeners. Um, the... NDC will have tried to obtain a copy of the judgment. We will peruse it, look at it, and then look at the options that are available to us. Uh, basically, we have, as uh, the previous uh, lawyer uh, indicated, the option of an appeal, or we have the option to decide to go for the by-election, as uh, that is what the current decision is. Um, either way, we are not perturbed. We are quite certain that uh, depending on whatever decision we take, we are quite clear that at the end of the day, um, the seat will remain an NDC seat. Uh, the, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Segwefia. The, the, the concerns we have, uh, are why we have to look at an appeal, is that actually when we, you look at the whole case, 
the issues that we were hoping to take to the Supreme Court um, are still have still not been answered. And they're actually quite pertinent, especially for those in the diaspora who want to come and be part of our system. And the, the view uh, is that we are all inclined towards Ropal, etc. So how you interpret the particular section, which is Article 94.2, um, in terms of our constitution, uh, the constitution uses the word citizen, citizen and citizenship in one in section eight very clearly, and yet in this Article 94, it uses the word allegiance to another country. And the two can be mutually exclusive and not uh, necessarily connected always. And therefore, it is clear to some of us that that, that aspect of it should have been made clear within the judgment um, to clear, clear certain things. Because the fact that somebody um, is a citizen does not necessarily mean that he has a li- allegiance to uh, a particular state or a particular country. Um, and citizenship is not easily lost because people don't want to be made stateless. However, if the fact that you still belong to a state does not necessarily mean that your allegiance is with that state. And you can also give allegiance without actually being a citizen. So it, there are two separate terms, and the framers of the Constitution were clear when they used citizenship and when they used allegiance. This has not been made clear, and it is, we were hoping that the judgment would actually touch on this, and it did not. Um, and so the, the, uh, for us, it's not simply the question of um, uh, our candidate being just the MP. There are wider and bigger questions. Um, in the, we, we, we simply ask uh, if the MPP uh, had been a party that is talking about Ropal and bringing the youth on board and the right to vote, etc., why is this that this is an issue? Uh, do we want a representation for the people? The, at the time when this man swore in as uh, became the MP for uh, in question, he was a citizen of Ghana and only a citizen of Ghana and had allegiance to only one country, Ghana. At the time when the people went to vote, he was a citizen of Ghana, was only uh, part, uh, had allegiance to Ghana, and that is the position. However, it is true. And that is the point the judge, judge makes, that the point at which the filing was, took place, he had not got a, uh, a certificate saying he was no longer a citizen. However, the fact that he didn't have a certificate saying he didn't, was a citizen does not of itself mean that his allegiance was still with the country to which uh, uh, he was a citizen. He could, he could easily have relinquished that by other means. And in order for that to happen, it would have required some form of cross-examination as well, which was denied. The judge took the view that this was a matter that should be dealt with on, on legal issues. So from, it's, from even a legal perspective, it raises very interesting jurisprudential issues with regard to interpretation and, and, and things of that nature. But uh, our efforts to have the matter um, set aside, or the not set aside, but to have the matter uh, uh, delayed or postponed by an application uh, this morning was thwarted because when even though we were in court from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock waiting to file, both the registry and the court room, the court uh, pay office were closed. The moment the judge got to court and started reading his judgment, they opened, allowing us to file the, judge, the, the, the applications we had at that point and the, to stay um, his hand on reading the judgment and also to stay his hand to be also put in uh, our final statement. So what our, happens to the Member of Parliament, Judge Equation? Will he still go to Parliament as he takes a no, decision he cannot. on what he cannot. to do? Right. No. I'm grateful. At the moment, mm. as, it stands, mm. as it stands, the court has ruled uh, clearly that um, he's no longer to hold himself out as a Member of Parliament. Mm. We have to now look at it, advise ourselves. And there are legal options, which in some ways could actually potentially, uh, if we do go for an appeal, uh, the other uh, applications we can make which have the tendency or the possibility of reversing that uh, to such time that the appeal is uh, over or suspending it, uh, depending, um, and then we will know where we are. But uh, the decision as to whether we go for an appeal or not is still in abeyance. We, as individuals, don't make those decisions. The senior lawyers will look at it, don't look at the judgment, 
and a decision will be made one way or the other where we go from here. Mr. Segovia, I'm extremely grateful for your time this afternoon. He is Thank a member too. of the uh, Functional Executive Committee and also a member of the legal team of the NDC.